So we're going to go ahead and implement the open weather map API proper. So now the first thing we need to do will be to get the input of our place name. So I'm going to say string place. This should be equal to city name edit test dot test. So we're going to go ahead and create a method that will actually implement the API. I'm going to call this method get weather. So this method will take a parameter of our place. So we're going to pass it our place. Because we are going to be making use of our API key, so we're going to have to define our API key. So we're going to go ahead and paste the API key that we obtained from open weather map. All right, so I'm going to paste mine. In case you've forgotten how we got that, you can go back to sign in. It will show you already signed in, and you click on API keys. So this is the key that I'm actually referring to. So we're going to go back to our Visual Studio. Now that we have our API key, so the next thing we need to do will be to build up our URL, all right? So for instance, we had an example of the URL that we'll be using. So this is actually the URL that I'm talking about. So if you click on this, you will see how this um, URL was used here. So you can see that it passed um, the city name after the API base. You can now see that it passed the country code, which will, will actually be new the most times. If you remove it, it will still work. Okay, and afterwards, we added the app ID, which is the API key to the URL. So this is exactly the kind of string that we're going to be building up in our app. So let's go back to Visual Studio. I'm going to define my API base. Boom. There's also one more attribute that we'll be needing, which is the unit. So this unit wasn't actually included in their documentation, but uh, this is just how it's done. Okay, so now that we have all of this information, let's go ahead and build our URL. So the first thing to do will be to verify that this place variable has some input. We don't want to go ahead and send an empty string to the API. So I'm going to go ahead and say if string dot is null or empty, I'm going to pass it place. If this is the case, we're going to go ahead and make a toast. We're going to say, please enter a valid city name. And the length will be short. And after which, we're going to exit this method by saying return. So now that we have that out of the way, the next thing we need to do will be to build the URL. So I'm going to define a new string URL, which will be equal to API base plus place plus. So we're going to concatenate app ID and equal to. <laughs> then we're going to add our API key. And we're going to concatenate our units. Boom. So now we have our URL. So the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and make our web request. I must explain that there are two ways to make a web request when coding with C Sharp. Firstly, you can make use of HTTP client, which is very, very simple and short to implement, but it's also very efficient when you're just expecting a JSON string as a response. Another way of making a web request is by using HTTP web request, which is very efficient for all kinds of responses Say you're expecting a string, just a JSON string, or you want to download an image from the API, the HTTP web request is efficient to handle that. For the fact that we are only expecting JSON responses at this particular stage, we are going to make use of a HTTP client. And to use HTTP client, we need to go ahead and install a new package, right? So we're going to go to our solution explorer. So we're going to go ahead and open our Nugget package manager. So here we're gonna go ahead and search for system.net.http. Okay, so this is the one we're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and install this Nugget package, which will allow us to make use of HTTP client. Okay, so our Nugget package has successfully installed. Now let's go ahead and implement it. So to implement it, I'm gonna save our handler. This will be equal to new HTTP client handler. 
So let's try to resolve this because we're not, we've not yet brought in the namespace. So this is it. We're going to bring in the namespace. So we now have our handler defined. So we're going to define our HTTP client. We're going to call it client. This will be equal to new HTTP client. And we're going to pass it our handler. The next thing we need to do will be to query the API and expect a result. So I'm going to define my result. And this will be equal to client.getStringAsync. And we're going to pass it our URL. Okay. This is producing an error because it is an async task, an asynchronous task. So we're going to go ahead and add an await statement before our getString statement. For this to be able to work, we need to go ahead and add async to the method. Okay. So as you can see, the error has now been resolved. Provided that you're going to be having any asynchronous request that will need you to await for a task to complete, you will need to add async, you know, as one of the signatures to the method. So this will go ahead and get the string from our URL. And before that, we made a mistake here. We need to go ahead and complete this. Okay, so this is how it was supposed to be, HTTPS. If not, it will actually give us some issues. So to verify that everything works properly, I'm going to go ahead and display the result in our console. So I'm going to have console. So I'm going to resolve this. Console.write line. I'm going to display our result. So this is the confirm that we're actually getting the response that we're expecting from the API. So now that we have that, we're going to go to our button click event handler and call this method. So I have get weather and we're going to pass it our place. Boom. So let's go ahead and run the app and verify that, yeah, we are really getting the data from the API. So what we are expecting here currently is a JSON string. So let's go ahead and run our app. Okay, bam. So our app is ready to rock and roll. So what I'm going to do is to add a breakpoint so that we'll be able to inspect the result from the API query. So let's pull up the app. So we're going to go ahead and impute a city name, say London. Then we're going to click on check weather. So this method has been called, but it's still awaiting response. Boom. So we now have our response. So I can now go ahead and inspect the result from the API query. Boom. So this is exactly what we wanted to have. As you can see, we have the country code as GB and we have the name of the place as London. And also we have the longitude and latitude um, coordinates. And also we have the weather description, which is scattered clouds. So this is exactly the response we are expecting from the API based on our input. So this looks similar to the one we got from the sample. So this is the sample, the API sample that we had earlier on. So this is how the data looks and it just looks exactly the same. So in the next class, we are going to be looking at how to pass this JSON so that we can be able to fetch the country code, the place name, and the temperature, as well as the weather description. So guys, see you in the next class.